Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. In this verse, Yahweh Shai, the Messiah is praying to the Father on behalf of his chosen people, the scattered lost tribes of Israel. He asks the Father to sanctify them, meaning to set them apart as holy and consecrated to God. The means by which the Father will sanctify his people is through his truth. God's word, as revealed in the scriptures and through the teachings of Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, is the ultimate truth. It is the standard by which all other claims to truth must be measured. For the scattered tribes of Israel to be sanctified and set apart for God's purposes, they must align their lives with God's revealed truth in His Word. As they study, believe, and obey the truth of Scripture, they will be transformed and made holy. The truth of God's Word has the power to cleanse His chosen people from sin, falsehood, and worldly corruption. By abiding in God's truth, the lost tribes of Israel can live as a holy people, in right relationship with God, fulfilling their calling and destiny as His special possession. In a world full of lies, deception, and shifting standards of right and wrong, God's unchanging truth is the sure foundation for the faith and sanctification of His chosen people Israel. As they build their lives on the bedrock of scriptural truth, they will stand strong and shine as lights in the darkness. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. For the scattered lost tribes of Israel, God's word serves as a guiding light in a world of darkness and uncertainty. Just as a lamp illuminates the path ahead, enabling a traveler to avoid pitfalls and obstacles, God's word provides wisdom, direction, and clarity for his chosen people as they navigate life's journey. The scriptures, as the revealed word of God, contain all that the lost tribes of Israel need to know in order to walk uprightly and stay on the path of righteousness. By studying, meditating on, and applying biblical truth, they can discern God's will, make wise decisions, and avoid the snares of sin and deception. In a world where the scattered tribes of Israel are surrounded by false teachings, cultural relativism, and moral compromise, God's word stands as an unchanging, trustworthy guide. As they walk in the light of scriptural truth, they can have confidence that they are following the right path, the path that leads to life, blessing, and fellowship with God. The image of a lamp also suggests that God's word provides comfort, assurance, and hope to his chosen people in dark times. When they face trials, temptations, or persecution, the light of scripture can dispel fear and despair, reminding them of God's promises, presence, and faithfulness. For the lost tribes of Israel, Embracing God's word as their lamp and light is essential to fulfilling their calling as a holy nation and a kingdom of priests. As they allow scripture to illumine their path and direct their steps, they can walk worthy of their chosen status and bring glory to God. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law a light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. In this proverb, God's commandments and laws are portrayed as a lamp and light specifically for His chosen people, the scattered lost tribes of Israel. The imagery suggests that God's instructions provide guidance, wisdom, and direction for the Israelites as they navigate through life. The commandments and laws given by God to Israel serve as a lamp, illuminating the right path to follow. They shed light on what is good and righteous in God's eyes, helping the lost tribes to make wise choices and avoid the pitfalls of sin and disobedience. Moreover, the law of God is described as a light, providing clarity and understanding amidst the darkness of a fallen world. By studying and meditating on God's law, the scattered tribes of Israel can gain insight into his character, his will, and his ways. The proverb also emphasizes the importance of accepting and heeding the reproofs and instructions that come from God's word. These corrections and teachings are not meant to burden or condemn, but rather to guide the lost tribes of Israel in the way of life. By embracing the wisdom and guidance found in God's commandments and laws, and by accepting the reproofs and instructions of Scripture, the scattered tribes of Israel can experience the abundant life that God intends for His chosen people. In a world full of confusion, deception, and moral relativism, holding fast to the lamp and light of God's Word is crucial for the lost tribes of Israel to maintain their identity, fulfill their purpose, and walk in the way of life as God's chosen people. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the Israelite world. 
He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. In this interpretation, Yahweh Shai, the Messiah is declaring himself to be the light specifically for the Israelite world, which encompasses the scattered lost tribes of Israel. The term world in this context is not referring to the entire globe or all of humanity, but rather to the realm and existence of God's chosen people, the Israelites. Yahweh, Shai the Messiah mission, was to bring salvation and enlightenment to the lost tribes of Israel. He came as the promised Messiah to fulfill the prophecies and covenants given to the Israelites, to restore them to right relationship with God, and to guide them in the ways of truth and righteousness. As the light of the Israelite world, Yahweh Shai, the Messiah shines his truth and revelation upon the scattered tribes, dispelling the darkness of sin, ignorance, and separation from God. He illuminates the path that the Israelites are called to walk, in obedience to God's commandments, and in fulfillment of their unique calling as his chosen people. For the lost tribes of Israel, following Yahweh Shai the Messiah as the light of their world is essential to their identity, purpose, and salvation. By embracing Yahweh Shai as their Messiah and walking in his light, they can experience the fullness of life that God intends for them in fellowship with him. Yahweh Shai. The Messiah role as the light is specific to the Israelite world and that his mission of salvation is focused on the scattered tribes of Israel, rather than on Gentiles or humanity as a whole. It highlights the unique and exclusive relationship between God and his chosen people, the Israelites. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. In this passage, Yahshua engages in a conversation with a Samaritan woman at Jacob's well. While the text does not directly confirm that the woman was a descendant of the scattered lost tribes of Israel, the historical context suggests that the Samaritans had ancestral ties to the northern tribes of Israel who had intermarried with Assyrian colonists. Regardless of her precise lineage, Yahshua's interaction with the Samaritan woman is significant, as he chooses to reveal profound spiritual truths to her. By declaring that God is spirit, Yahshua emphasizes that true worship of God is not confined to any particular location or temple, whether in Jerusalem or on Mount Gerizim, where the Samaritans worshipped. Yahshua teaches that genuine worship of God must be in spirit and truth. This means that the lost tribes of Israel and all those who seek to worship God must do so with sincerity of heart and in accordance with the truth of who he is, as revealed through Yahshua and the scriptures. The fact that Yahshua reveals these truths to the Samaritan woman, despite the prevailing prejudice and exclusion faced by Samaritans, indicates that his mission of salvation and restoration extends to all those who are willing to receive his message, including the scattered lost tribes of Israel. Through this encounter, Yahshua breaks down barriers and demonstrates that true worship and acceptance by the Messiah are not based on external factors such as lineage or religious traditions. Instead, it is rooted in a genuine spiritual connection with God through Yahshua and a commitment to worshiping him in spirit and truth. Although the text does not explicitly confirm the Samaritan woman's descent from the scattered lost tribes, Yahshua's willingness to reveal his truth to her suggests that his mission encompasses all those who are open to receiving his message, including the lost tribes of Israel. This passage highlights Yahshua's role as the Messiah, who brings revelation and blessing to those who seek him, guiding them into true worship and relationship with God. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. In this verse, Moses is addressing the chosen people of Israel, emphasizing the paramount importance of their devotion to God. This command is given specifically to the Israelites, who were set apart by God as his special possession and covenant people. According to the exclusive doctrine, this verse underscores the unique relationship between God and the scattered lost tribes of Israel. It highlights the responsibility and privilege of the Israelites to love God with their entire being, heart, soul, and strength. Loving God with all their heart implies that the lost tribes of Israel are to be wholly committed to God, allowing Him to reign supreme in their affections and desires. Their love for God must be sincere, undivided, and unwavering. Loving God with all their soul suggests that the Israelites are to devote their entire lives, their very essence, to serving and honoring God. Their relationship with God should be the defining factor in their identity and purpose. 
loving God with all their strength indicates that the scattered lost tribes are to actively pursue obedience to God's commands and to serve Him with all their resources and abilities. They are to dedicate their energy, their possessions, and their skills to the worship and service of God. This all-encompassing love for God is not only a command, but also a response to God's initiating love and grace toward His chosen people, the Israelites. It is a reflection of the exclusive covenant relationship that God established with the lost tribes of Israel. By wholeheartedly loving God, the scattered lost tribes of Israel fulfill their part in the covenant relationship and align themselves with God's purposes for them as His chosen people. This commitment to loving God is essential for their spiritual well-being, their identity as God's people, and their role in representing God to the world. In the context of the exclusive doctrine, this verse emphasizes the distinct calling and responsibility of the lost tribes of Israel to love God completely and unreservedly, setting them apart from all other nations and peoples.